the new 2021 Apple TV, M1 iPad Pro, and iMac. This season, we're unboxing first and getting first impressions before doing detailed reviews and tests on each of them. Let me know which product you'd like me to review first in the comments below. Give this a like if it helps and subscribe for more. Let's unbox. First up is the new 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro. Bigger than the 11 inch, this starts at 1099. Exclusively with the Liquid Retina XDR display. This size used to start at 999, but now at 1099 because of the new display. And you have the option to add 5G. It's available in two colors, silver and space gray. 20 watt power brick. Keep in mind this doesn't include the keyboard. Way. Aside from the unnoticeably thicker and heavier case, you've seen this design for years, so for now I'll cover a summary of what's new. This is the first Apple product with mini LED, which gives a similar effect as OLED, giving you a million to one ratio in contrast. 1000 nits of brightness and up to 600 nits for HDR content. I've been waiting for this so I can finally color grade my HDR videos shot on iPhone 12 Pro Max. Just like this video. Still learning though, so give me some time to master it. You can now get from 128 gigabytes to two terabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM or 16 gigabytes if you get the higher storage options. Along with the M1 chip, eight gigabytes seems to already be efficient, remembering all of my wide variety of apps. Its single port is now Thunderbolt and USB 4 for faster data up to 40 gigabits per second compared to the previous generation's USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 at 10 gigabits per second. Though it doesn't seem optimized yet, it's predicted to be by the next iPadOS 15 update, hopefully. You can add another port with a Magic Keyboard, but it's only for pass-through charging. All this in the same M1 chip as Apple's newest computers makes this even more closer to a computer than a tablet. Rumored to get a software closer to that nature, in fact, I did a Geekbench test, giving a benchmark reading of the processor's performance, and it pretty much did the same, if not just slightly lower. What Apple calls studio quality mics have been great for iPad mics. The audio you've been hearing is actually from this iPad Pro. What do you think? Compared to my older 12.9 inch iPad Pro from 2017, the speakers actually sound more muffled. I don't know if I got a faulty one, but so far, I'm honestly not impressed. Its camera's now f2.4 at 12 megapixels, compared to last generation's f2.2 at 7 megapixels. I've been FaceTiming people and everyone's loving the center stage on the front facing camera, which uses the ultra wide lens to track people during FaceTime, appearing like someone's holding a camera to focus on you. Take a look. The 
the new 4K Apple TV. It starts at 179 for 32 gigabytes and 199 for 64 gigabytes. Just like the old one. New Siri Remote. It's supposed to be a more natural ergonomic design with a new touch control button. It's thicker and we now have a mute button. Now Siri is on the side so your finger is already there. To summarize new features, it now has support for your Dolby Vision HDR TV as well as Dolby Atmos Sound. So you get the best quality entertainment experience technology now offers. I think we've all been waiting for this for a long time, especially last year when everyone started to be more indoors. Calibrate the TV's color. Use the front facing camera on iPhone to calibrate the TV. So it doesn't have to feel like you have to color grade. For convenience, you can actually use your other devices as a remote for your Apple TV. Like your iPhone or Apple Watch, even your iPad. Connect something like an Xbox or PlayStation controller as some games are actually made for it. I'll go more in depth with all of this as I use it naturally throughout the weeks. So hit that bell icon to get notified. The new M1 iMac 2021. Finally, this year's new 24 inch M1 iMac, technically 23.5 inches, comes in an array of colors reminiscent of the original iMacs starting at $12.99 and up for the base model and $14.99 and up for the higher end model. More about the differences later. Ooh, everything's silver. The colors of the keyboard and mouse pleasantly matches with it. In fact, everything that comes with it matches down to the wires and even the sticker. I am tempted to color block these. Like I want a green computer with a purple keyboard and a blue mouse. Bigger logo. For RAM, you still have the option of 8 or 16 gigabytes of unified memory, depending on how much you need. It's a permanent choice, so highly consider your needs. I had 8 gigabytes on my M1 Mac Mini and I pushed the memory pressure. It was able to take a good amount of multitasking until it started acting funny. For storage, choose from 256 gigabytes to two terabytes of SSD. It's a 4.5K LCD display with P3 color, 500 nits, and can tilt up and down. You can choose a Visa display mount for the same cost if you want more range of movement. The magnetic power adapter is pretty strong. <laughs> Probably not labeled MagSafe because it's made to be more stationary, not often removed. The case is super thin with straight edges like all of their new products now, from iPhone to iPad. Bezels are now thinner. So they had to move the headphone jack to the side instead of the back. We don't get the anti-glare option like the Pro Display XDR. And again, it's color to your choice with more options on higher end iMacs. I do like how you can possibly match your iPhone 12 with it or even your iPad Air. The white bezels stay the same though. I honestly like it black. And the chin's now glossy without an Apple logo. 
which is unusual, but it does look cleaner. I guess we could put one of the matching Apple stickers on it. Eh. This aesthetic is designed more for the home than in an office, like a family computer or maybe even a classroom. In middle school, I remember several of the original iMacs in the library, and it looks so good. I noticed the Touch ID on the keyboard is not as fast as the one on the MacBook Pro, probably because it's using Bluetooth and not directly connected. Still satisfying, and glad it's there now. I just think it's time for iMac to get Face ID. Hopefully the bigger iMac coming later will have it. Having a more advanced image signal processor, the 1080p camera is now a little better with help from M1. Soon I'll be testing the updated studio quality mic, which will help our Zoom and FaceTime sessions sound better. The 1299 base model has two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports and a Magic Keyboard with a regular unlock button and not Touch ID. It only has 7 cores compared to our higher end model that we have here, which starts at $1499 and has 4 total ports. Two of them Thunderbolt USB 4 ports and two of them USB 3. All using USB-C connectors so that's why they all look the same, except two of them have a Thunderbolt symbol. M1 seems to be limited to only two Thunderbolt controllers. So those of you who use all the high performance peripherals might still need a Thunderbolt 4 dock to expand that. Another difference with this is the gigabit ethernet port. Now on the power brick, it's a bit cleaner than having it on the back of the display, especially if you have a network of several computers. I have fast Wi-Fi in my office, but when I connected this, but using ethernet was about five times faster. You have the additional color choices of yellow, orange, and purple on top of the base blue, green, red, and silver. By the way, does this silver white version remind anyone of the iMac from 2004? It also includes a magic keyboard, but with a touch ID. Remember, there's also the numerical keyboard option for a little more. The website presents a third option, but it seems to be the same as the second one, only starts with 512 gigabytes of storage. Both can be upgraded to two terabytes. Definitely let us know if you see any other differences. This video is actually edited on the iMac. In 2021 standards, you still get the pro level performance M1 is known for with draw frames here and there, but it's still generally smooth. But don't expect it to perform like your specked out Mac Pro. That's for the later expected Macs, for pros that demand even more power. You know I'll be on top of that. All right, more to come soon. Amazon links for these in the description below. I hope this helped. If so, give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.